reasons or for from these immigrants uh, comes children. Some are mixed, some are not. Some come here as uh, uh, children. They were not born here. Maybe they come here as a toddler or a 10 year old or a 15 year old, etc. Some are born here. And um, all those children I'd like to believe have different uh, experiences across Banahage, Banaskula, Bungdom Skula, Vidergona Skula. So, um, we have two ladies here, Sis Fungi and Sis Victoria, who have children. Um, and uh, I think they are best positioned. Maybe you can uh, tell us about your experiences as a parent, your experience of the education system in uh, Banahage or Banaskula in Norway. Okay. Okay. Thanks Nam, for a very nice introduction. Um, I guess I have, I have quite a broad range of experiences because I have experiences from the 90s with my old, oldest child who is now in his uh, late 20s. Mm -hmm. And I have experiences more recently with my younger children who are now um, 9 and 13. So I have experience from, you know, of the spectrum from Abana Haga to Abana Skula. And then I've got Vidragona, <laughs> and now also a bit of Ungdom schooler. Yeah. And I have experience of public and private schooling. Yeah. So um, I guess what I can say um, quickly is that my experience in the 90s uh, of uh, Barnahage was very positive. I think there was um, this uh, general acceptance of children. There was, uh, it, my son was never treated differently. Um, and it was a very sort of loving and supportive and, uh, you know, positive environment. The change was when he went to Barna School, and that was a, a, a very different environment then. And as you can imagine, in the 90s, um, there were very few children of color in the classes. So that was a different um, experience. And I think myself, as a, a young parent at that time, maybe struggled to handle being a foreigner and then having a child in a school and a child being exposed to racist comments and teachers not knowing how to deal with it and teachers turning it around so that it's it's not just the other child's fault it's your child's fault as well your child said this child said this and your child said that when my child saying something back in order yeah. to protect himself because um so that for it was very problematic um for us um, because they just they, they, they the teachers were just not equipped as as yeah. far as I could see to deal with issues of diversity and to deal with children who yes. are different. Um, the experience with my um, oh with my children now um, you know so many years later um, has been more in a private school environment and we still have had issues. Yeah. Um, but I feel the issues have been there's an effort. To, 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 to understand there's an effort to nip the racist uh, you know behavior in the bud and to say this is not acceptable we do not accept this at the school but I still feel there is a lack of understanding of what this actually means if you have not experienced racism if you are not if you've never been the other then of course it's very difficult but at least the, the teachers try you know um, but I feel there is a need there for more training understanding sensitization yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's what I will start with, just to say that's been my experience so far with, with regard to my children. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have a follow-up question to you, um, that your first child uh, went to public school and yes. children went to, uh, going to private school. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, is there a difference between public and private maybe not paying too much attention i don't know uh, on the times at which they went but mm -hmm. what do you think has the private uh, system uh, stepped up to the multicultural uh, need uh, i wouldn't say it stepped up but i would say it's a much smaller environment so they maybe have more time to actually deal with these issues. I think if it was a larger environment, they're dealing with more kids. It's much more challenging to, to, to you know, deal with the individual issues. So I think yeah. because it is a smaller environment, they have the time to really work on these issues and to really tackle these issues when they, when they emerge. 
right. I think that would be the difference. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Sis Victoria, you are up on your experience as a parent um, with the school system in Norway. Mm. Uh, it is always challenging to come after Fungi. <laughs> she, she, she says everything before I come, <laughs> I come online. <laughs> but anyway, let me say that um, the experience in uh, the kindergarten, the smaller children, I have never felt they have been treated any differently uh, than the other children. So uh, things start very innocently from that level. And it also has to do with the interaction that the children are, are having amongst themselves. And children at that age, they are very innocent. They are playing with each other. They are hugging each other. They are best friends with each other. But I think uh, uh, it changes as they grow a little bit older and are trying to make some meanings about everything around them and they start to question everything around them. So uh, that's where uh, I've had challenges. Right now I have like uh, experience from the kindergarten. Yeah, things are calm and quite okay there. And then I have two in uh, in the school, uh, the Banner School uh, between uh, grade one and seven. Uh, there are things, things do happen. So uh, quite unfortunate, but uh, in as much as we don't want to talk about uh, things related to racism and stuff like that, we are gonna have to do that. I have taken some time to, to deal with things like that uh, from experience and I've shared a little bit before on uh, my Facebook page about yeah. uh, my experiences, they have been personal. Um, and I took some time to share. So those are issues that we still have to, to deal with. And my experience is uh, related to the uh, public school. And here, I think uh, we have uh, children in, in large numbers. So I think that kind of limits uh, the reaction, even if the schools are going to tackle some of these issues. So uh, you have many students to deal with, rather than uh, in the private, I guess. So uh, these issues, they are there, they are existent, and we have to do it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, I think what comes from the both of you is that uh, that is common, is that uh, private school um, is more, it's lesser children and hence more attention that is uh, awarded to each child. Hence the experience becomes very different from a public school. And also that uh, Banahage, the Banahage experience is like everything is innocent there. The child is a child, they are playing. If we are fighting, we're fighting, we get over it, we move on. And uh, the dynamic changes as the children grow from Banahage to uh, Banaskula. Um, I won't forget you, Naomi. I just really need to ask uh, the parents. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> That's good. Experience and knowledge when it comes uh, to uh, children. Um, can you say that when it uh, comes to a Bana school or Bungdom uh, school? Can you say there's a difference in uh, teacher training, maybe, um, uh, the pe pedagogy um, uh, um, systems that are employed in Norway? Do you think they work? Do you think they need to be strengthened? Do you think they are even evident in the mode of education that your children receive? Are you saying, so are you saying, um are the teachers trained in these issues of diversity? We, we, are, uh, we are speaking on um, the minority groups and in mm. the Norwegian uh, education uh, sphere, it's, uh, um, we're talking about multiculturalism in this mm -hmm. education system or in the school system. And now we're like talking about Banaskula. Uh, um, uh, if the teachers there, do you think they receive the necessary training or multicultural uh, training or diversity. And also in their hiring in schools, what can you say about multicultural hiring or diversity in hiring for uh, uh, the enhancement or betterment of uh, your children's experiences, both in private and public maybe? Yeah. Um 
I think you would then need to have uh, policies that specifically acknowledge. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. my internet is unstable. Okay. Um, you would have to you would have to get policies that specifically. I guess you would what you would call a multicultural um, and thus thinks, OK, how do we deal with this? We have children who are, you know, from different backgrounds, um, from different types of families in the schools. Um, so how do we deal with that? For example, if you think about uh, the, 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 the sort of the, the, the gay movement, um, children are, talk, are told in school and in Barnahaga that there are different types of families. So you can see that has it, it's a policy that is there is that equality policy, which has been. Um, which has been embraced and which then goes out into the schools. So the kids know, you know, they're not going to laugh at so-and-so because so-and-so has two mothers or two fathers. But with, re with, re with regard to uh, ethnicity, um, so far as from my experience, and this is really just talking from my own experience, I don't think this is something that has really, it's beginning to, um, because of what happened in 2015 and because of some of the issues that teachers are facing. I think it's beginning to come in. But um, it's from my personal experience, I really don't think that I'm across who are very nice people, um, but I don't think they have yeah. any specific training for that. Yeah. But that's my personal experience. Okay. Uh, since Vic, what can you say with the teacher training and diversity in hiring, uh, teacher hiring? Uh, uh, it's really a bit difficult for me to comment on that because I don't really know like uh, uh, whether they have any specific uh, uh, policies in that uh, in place. But uh, I would also say that it's it's not something that comes only from one direction uh, where we end up with our children. I think it's uh, perhaps something that is beyond uh, just the teachers. Uh, I mean, uh, whereas, for example, if these things happen amongst uh, in between and amongst uh, children, where are these children coming from? We we can't give responsibility only to to the school systems, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, let's look uh, back at the parents, the homes where they are coming from, in the society at large, and try to find meaning from there also. So I, I think this is like. Uh, we have to have some form of uh, a comprehensive uh, approach. Yeah. Not just, uh, yeah, uh, focusing on the, uh, the, the schools. Because yeah. these people are largely in their homes. In the schools, they are just there for a couple of hours. But uh, there is main responsibility. I think it would also go beyond. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, it's not such a, a great uh, review or experience with uh, uh, multiculturalism or uh, diversity in uh, school hiring and uh, the treatment of uh, children. And uh, Sisfung said there needs to be a revision of the policies, just like the other um, diversities, say, um, uh, sexual orientation that are being uh, that children are being exposed to in schools and they should um, ethnic diversity or differences must also get the same uh, uh, attention or children must also be exposed as much to the differences amongst themselves and how they can best handle that and uh, Sis Vick just said uh, it's um, a community issue from the parents where the children come from to the schools where the children go to um, but it is in fact very necessary that the school system or uh, the pedagogical that word is so difficult to the pedagogical uh, practices that are employed in Norway must reflect um, the society and its growing diversity or its growing multiculturalism uh, from the methods that they employ in training teachers to um, mm -hmm. the hiring of teachers also in schools because I I do think that as say as a black child you go to a school it's everyone is Norwegian including all the teachers are Norwegian your experience is different from uh, a child who goes to a school where 
children are mixed as well as the teachers are mixed. So uh, thank you for that um, uh, feedback. And um, it's true that we can't uh, delve into everything there is to do. And we should note that the things we say here are our experiences or uh, the comments that have been made so far, it's their experiences. They don't uh, apply to everybody. Maybe you can find uh, that you relate, but it's definitely not um, a hundred percent experience of all minority groups. Okay, um, let's move on from uh, Panahage or Panaschoola to Ungdom Schoola. Um, Sis Fungi, you have a a, a child in uh, yeah. Ungdom. Um, is it different in Ungdom Schoola from uh, Bana Schoola? Because I, as I understand from what both of you said, is that at Bana Schoola, every child begins to be aware of themselves or who they are or where they come from, etc. And also the differences amongst themselves and the experience changes from when they were in uh, uh, Panahage. Is that the same thing also? Is that the same trend in when they move to Ungdom Schoola? school yeah I would think so because now they're really finding out who they are and trying to sort of make their own way in the world and um, kind of build their identity so I would say it is the same I can't say too much well I guess I can say a little bit um, from my experience um, from the video and experience it is again these issues of uh, you know, like the things that you said, Vicky, you know, about acceptance. Um, and it's not just about, you know, the school itself, but also about society at large and where people are coming from and the homes that people are coming from. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really important. So in, in some ways, this can be even more of a struggle because um, at Bana School, you're still pretty much a kid. You're not thinking too deeply about things. But as you get to become a teenager, you know, you, you're going through all so many changes um, and it does become a lot more challenging because you are trying to develop your identity who am I and as you guys said very 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 um, clearly saying who am I when you're surrounded by people who do not have not had your experience is actually really difficult and challenging and I think this these are times when problems can actually arise I guess Naomi you have been a, 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 an umdom in this society so you would probably have more insight we're just saying it from a distance Seeing it from a distance. Yeah, you get the parent mm. perspective and then Naomi's perspective. Because I think when you send children out to school, whatever, even if you haven't taught them some things at home or ways of viewing themselves, they go out there, they come back to you as a parent mm. with you know, strange views that you didn't teach them. And so that is why your opinion is very important as well as a parent of yeah. youth. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's good. That's a very good point where it is about what we teach them at home, because when, when I was thinking about this education thing, I was thinking, OK, there's the schooling where they go to school and then there's the education, what they learn from home. Yeah. Um, and I think here as parents, we have a really, really important role to play. We really have to be clear on what do we stand for? What are our, our values? So when your child comes and like you say, comes with some strange things and strange views, you have a discussion about it um, and you say, well, yes, okay, I hear what you're saying, but then you have a discussion about, you know, what you, what you think is right and et cetera, and how to see other people and stuff like that. And also how to be, how to stand up for yourself. Um, because that is also, that is the biggest challenge is when you are attacked, um, you know, uh, verbally abused, how do you stand up for yourself? You have to have that strong sense of, who you are in order to be able to really stand for yourself stand up for yourself and as a parent that is something that we can provide that sense of security that sense of you know who i am is important and is worthy um and that way then the kids i think can, will have that strength to be able to stand up when they face various challenges okay uh, and can i ask when do you begin as a parent that home teaching or instilling those values or whatever you want to teach your children, when do you begin? Of course, they <laughs> begin having problems or speaking about them or getting affected more as they grow. 
especially in the school at a critical age you know everyone is uh, trying to find themselves but as a parent in your opinion uh, when do you begin teaching your children about their difference from the other children from of their experience and awareness of themselves from the others and how to handle both worlds home and outside Should I respond? Um, uh, okay, maybe because Sis Fungi was talking before. Sis Vicky can respond and then Sis Fungi respond. Okay. Um, I would uh, say that the earlier the better. Uh, catch them young. <laughs> yes. That is early as early uh, From my experience, I would like to say that um, I can't say that it's positive that we, we ended up where we are now. Like uh, these things, verbal, they've been verbal attacks, I can yeah. say. They've also been uh, physical uh, assaults uh, yeah. coming from the school environment. So uh, what we have uh, actually taken from that experience is that we've had to start early. As early as uh, second grade, we start to talk about these issues. We have a round table where we discuss uh, these things. They are happening, they are real. What do we do about this? So actually, uh, we, we spend a great deal of time at home educating uh, our children about their identity. In as much as you find yourself like in a foreign country where everyone is looking different, but we are who we are. Who are we? We are Zimbabweans, we are Africans. And yeah, our yeah. skin is not gonna change. I tell my children that no matter uh, how much you think that you are like in another society i want you to always anticipate that somebody is going to stop you and ask you where you come from yeah that yeah. question is never going to go away so uh, uh get it uh straight into your head that it's going to be coming uh, all the time people are going to ask you some questions like that so you have to be aware of who you are and yeah. our culture and things like that they have to be safeguarded in as much as we are in a, a foreign land and we have so much to learn from the culture around here, but we have our own culture. We, we can't have anything dissolving away because, and I actually find it as an advantage to be uh, multicultural. I get the choice to pick the best from both cultures. I like that part. I mean, <laughs> everything that I like about this culture and that culture, I take both the positives and I smash them together into, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, multicultural uh, um, thing. So I like that part. So there is a lot of teaching, my children, but there is hope. I see the hope, I see it starting to come around. Uh, uh, my first one now is in fifth grade, but she's come a little bit far than when she was like three or four years ago. Now she is so much aware about, uh, about race. She is so much aware about her own culture and, and things like that. And the way she talks about it, for example, she will tell you, um, uh, you are invited to a parents meeting and she says, uh, she comes into the bathroom and she's like, mommy, please, please, no doling up too much, you know, it's just a parents meeting, you know. <laughs> so I'm having somebody standing by the door and controlling the amount of, of makeup. <laughs> shouting back i'm like you know what <laughs> this is how an african sis is going to look like so <laughs> you give me a break <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there are things like that you see that they are starting to get it and on sunday i i will doll up and i'll sit on my couch right now with this uh, uh virtual church meeting i will doll up and I will dress up and I'll sit on the couch while listening to my God, you know, that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and they'll be like, Mom, but where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to church. She's like, yeah. okay. And I'm like, yeah, church these days is ritual. So we're going to be sitting on that couch, all dressed up, listening to a Sunday service, streaming all the way from Zimbabwe. This is how we're going to roll. So guys, dress up. <laughs> <laughs> and get ready to. And sometimes, like, um, we are going for a meeting, and then my big one, she says, But mom, I don't want you to be late. She is very, like, sensitive. Mom, you can't afford to be late. I'm like, But why is it so much pressure about you and me being restrained? 
mom, we're already African. Don't you get it? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, what is that supposed to mean? He's like, you know what it means? What it means is that I am probably, she's probably the only one, or perhaps there are two in that class. And you know, you're already visible because you're different. And you're coming late again, even just wasting everything. <laughs> so I like to have such kind of discussions. And I, I like to hear them like talking and to hear those perspectives coming. Because she's like, you know, all the other people around that meeting, you know, they, they are already looking similar. So even if one of them is going to be late, they won't notice. But if you are going to be coming like this late in that skin of yours, everybody's going to notice you. So <laughs> there is no lateness. So I have a lot of pressure around me. They are very sensitive about how I'm going to dress when I'm stepping out. Mommy, please don't overdress, okay? <laughs> so they've definitely gotten some things about their own culture. Yeah. Things, too much doling up. There is perhaps some Absolutely. lateness and things like that. But I see the awareness. They, they are very much aware about what is going on around them. And they also uh, get the jokes that goes on in between the cultures. So there is hope they start to get these things. Wow, thank you so much uh, for that feedback. Uh, Sis Funky, is there anything you can add to what Sis Victoria has already said? I think that was a very, that was very nicely put. Um, I guess I, I agree with uh, with Vicky that you, you need to start really early, um, but you also need to be aware. I think t teaching them our culture, I think is important, but the issue of being different, we need to be aware that we don't introduce it too early and make the and make it a problem for the children. So I think that we need to tread very carefully because especially at Banahaga, like you said, Vicky, at Banahaga, they're all friends, they all love each other. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, we do need to talk about these these issues and make them aware and and in in a more general way, not in a way that, that problematizes it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think what is important is to is 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 the pride, is the the confidence, the standing up for yourself. Don't let people put you down. Um, and yeah. if somebody does, how do you deal with it? Teaching them how to stand up for themselves. I think that will go a very, very long way if we yeah. can do that. Wow. Um, so I think that that is important. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that uh, parent perspective on uh, uh, children and uh, education. What we get here is that parents, education is not only about the state and about uh, teachers. Parents at home, uh, minority parents, you also have a duty mm -hmm. to educate your children because not everything they're going to get at school is true. We are in no way. And um, uh, in the meantime, the Norwegian system is catching up to issues of immigrants uh, and uh, minority groups. You as a parent or we as parents, uh, have the duty to educate our children about a lot of other things that fall in between the cracks when it comes to uh, mm. formal education. Okay, Sis Naomi, you're up. Hey. Um, <laughs> gonna school experience. Well, How was your experience as a minority in that setting? I only speak from the Vidagon experience as that's where I started from. Yeah. And I will speak from two, uh, both public, because I attended an international course uh, that say that last two years of my high school career. <clears throat> and that was different. Uh, the, the first class, the first year, big class, um, not too big, but you know, the normal big. And uh, we were two black girls in my class. Actually, the only two minority uh, people. The other one was Russian, I think, a boy, a Russian boy. Yeah, so standing out definitely um, is an issue. And I, I won't speak uh, from a perspective of how I was treated. I think what I faced was more of my own mindset. You know, coming to Norway very new, seven months into the country, so you can imagine I wasn't yeah very confident with my Norwegian and I started right away with people who were fresh out of Ungdom um, school. They were all friends. It's, it's silkiness. Everybody knows everybody. So these kids have grown with each other their whole life. Um, and I'm two years older than everyone. Well, I was shorter, so I didn't show. <laughs> 
but um yeah but that's self-conscious of and self-awareness and just knowing that i have to catch up so much because the schools i went to in uganda i can't really even begin to compare the standard knowing how to use computers and doing mathematics on a computer i'm like what 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 yeah and so that that, that that aspect like the content of education was challenging and also a uh, lack of information definitely like it seems like people automatically know what to do and where to go next in case of what they want to be in future what courses they need yeah. I, mean, I did make a few mistakes maybe a lot uh, until you know which of course affected uh, my whole you know um, choices at, until the university you know lack of information was definitely a challenge and i see it in my family as well and for the informal part uh, of course i was living with my siblings and i uh, there is this level of there's difference in maturity uh, that i, I noticed uh, from the kids here uh, I turned 18 a few months after I moved to Norway and everybody expected me to make it a big deal but culturally like I didn't I didn't understand how people see growing up here and that was a challenge like um what do people do after school how do people view each other how do people interact with each other so uh, that was a very challenging thing to just understand so I ended up being quiet which I'm not yeah, and very <laughs> just uh, being a loner until I was able to attend the international class. We were very small, so that changed a lot. And I could relate with what Sister Fungi was saying like the environment changed dramatically. Yeah. Small classes, people are more accepting. I mean, you have each other, and we were like the different kids in the whole school. Although it was like a different course, we were still within the same environment. So we yeah. attended our own courses in English and everything. It's called the International Baccalaureate. So yeah. that was very relieving. I came out of my shell and people were more accepting because again, even though most of them were Norwegians, but they were the different Norwegians. Yeah. I mean it as a compliment, guys, if you watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that was very relieving and the uh, teachers were more helpful. They knew me as a person more than probably the, at the studio special setting, which was my first year. And mm. the social part of it um, became more, we were more close, we, we were more likely to do things together after school. And that is why I think I have friends from high school until today. Like if I still continued with the same class, uh, the big one, I, I think it, it, it would look different for me today. Yeah. But, uh, um, Maybe I'll talk more about my experience when you ask more questions, but generally that was it. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So um, what I just got from what you said is mm -hmm. the fact that they, it's a different experience. In the preamble, I mentioned that uh, some, uh, we come here for different reasons. Some move here uh, uh, like yourselves as refugees and you come here as pretty much a grown, child if i can put it that way and your experience is different from uh, a, a child who came here when they were a baby or someone who is uh, born from uh, immigrant parents but was born and bred in norway yet all of you are in the same bracket a minority group if i can put it that way or uh, students with um, immigrant backgrounds so what can we say what can you say about <clears throat> the packaging of information from a student perspective uh, of uh, the curriculum in the uh, school or maybe <clears throat> in general to cater for the different kinds of students <clears throat> excuse me or the different uh, stages at which minority groups uh, students are um, in the Norwegian education system. <clears throat> well, uh, I hope I answered you correctly, but there are there is some adjustments in the curriculum to cater for minority students. And one one example is, you don't have to take Ninosk 
if if your county is is uh, dominantly a book mall country, so that is one example. And also, they have uh, in not in every community actually, but in some community they have uh, an option that you can attend an all minority class. Okay. So uh, I think I said it last time. I was given this option to attend this pre high school class. That means I would spend a year going to school every day with other minority kids like to catch up, but that year would not count. Yeah. And I looked at my teacher, I'm like, you're kidding me. I'm not wasting more years and become even older than everyone next year. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. So there are a certain uh, adjustments, but generally the curriculum is fair for everyone. Um, yeah. It is, I think that, that, I think maybe people who have my experience can share them in the comments or if you guys do, but yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much for that uh, piece of information. We welcome uh, comments uh, regarding our experiences. Um, and also you can tell us what your experience is. Um, from the things we've touched on and also more when it comes to education and that will give us a chance to mull over uh, those comments and probably the next time we'll start on them before we move on onto something else because we believe that it all matters because this platform is for uh, minority groups and it's our issues that matter and it's the ones we are talking about at the moment norwegian born uh to immigrants, uh, parents seem to have an educational drive. This is according to um, uh, Statistics Norway, uh, which we can describe in the statistics as, despite somewhat poorer results in national tests and slightly lower grades at the end of secondary school, upper secondary school pupils complete their studies to about the same extent as other pupils. Many of them immediately enter a higher education. This uh, is pertaining uh, immigrants or um, Norwegian born to immigrant uh, students. Uh, they pursue a higher education. Uh, it's more common for uh, Norwegian born immigrant students to pursue higher education than in the general population of the same age. That's a very positive thing according to uh, Norwegian statistics. And we got a comment and or question from, uh, I don't know if it's okay to mention names, but she said, um, could you say something about choice of studies and how parents influence that? My experience with minority parents shows that parents want their kids to study uh, um, uh, being a doctor, being an engineer, basically science <laughs> uh, uh, fog, and other uh, prestigious professions. Studying at the university is seen as having a higher status than in high school. Something that makes many young people miss out on studying and or applying for many other important fields of studies. This is very interesting. <laughs> Um, now we move from uh, Vidergona to now we are graduating to university. <clears throat> the statistics say uh, uh, Norwegian born to immigrant students have a high rate of going forward with their education. And <clears throat> the comment says parents push or want their children to take sciences in their higher education and go to university uh, instead of the high schooler. And it's her opinion that the students miss out on more other opportunities, you know, that they could uh, take advantage of. So, career choices after Vidergona. Parents versus uh, children. Says Fungi, this sounds for you. Uh, I think it's really interesting. I think it was a really good question. Um, first of all, my question would be when they were looking at uh, this, uh, the, the study that you just quoted from SSB, that when they were looking at um, which uh, 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 children of uh, Norwegian-born kids of foreign-born parents, which 
uh, countries they were from. That would be interesting. I read the whole uh, uh, study. It's uh -huh. We focused on uh, the older generations of immigrants, like yeah. uh, the Pakistanis, the Asians. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and yeah. I was very sad that I couldn't find, because I searched for it today. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. um, instead of focusing, or maybe they did focus on them, because there is data on them, but there isn't a lot of data on uh, Africans. It's mostly put on general, which... Mm -hmm doesn't help much to actually see, um, in our case, African uh, uh, born children or like uh, with students with uh, African uh, immigrant backgrounds. Uh, so, but I just took that as, okay, they are not Norwegian mm. or they could be, could be in the same boat as the rest of us. And uh, also the comment from our dear viewer here. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think that's the thing. I think that is just a point I thought I would point out because, um, for example, Sri Lankans have been known to have uh, extra school on weekends for their kids organized by the communities. So there is a community push to achieve. There's a community push as Sri Lankans, Vietnamese, uh, probably Pakistanis, there's a community push that yeah. you know you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. So, yeah. and the communities work towards driving the young people to this. Um, but to go to the second question, of course, coming from our backgrounds, you know, when, you know, regardless of where, where your parents, what your parents' educational status was, there was always that I want my child to have a better education than me. I want my child possibly to go to university so that they can have a better life. There was this sort of um, idea that to go to university would end up in you having a better life, which is not necessarily correct. Yeah. But um, that is, I, I, what I, I would call it, that was our like co colonialized um, education and, and, and the way that we had been taught about what is education and what is best. Um, yeah. And that of course has been carried forward. Um, mm -hmm that many parents feel that my child has to go to university. Now we are in a completely different environment. We're not, we're not back home in our yeah. different countries. We are now in Norway. Um, and yes, it's great and prestigious to be a doctor, but you can also have a perfectly, probably a better living as a plumber. Yeah. But because of us as parents, because of our background from home, we're still stuck in that way of thinking that university is the only way forward. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not necessarily you get yourself a random degree and you can't get a job, but you've got a degree, you know. So um, I think this is really problematic. And, and I think this was a really good point that she brought up that we as parents, in a way, need to re-educate ourselves to say, what is the best for my child? How are they going to, you know, be successful in their lives? It doesn't matter if they don't have a degree, as long as they have a career or um, yeah, something that they enjoy and that they can do well in, that they can get, make a living from and get a job from. Because here with the flat um, society that we have, um, it doesn't really matter what you do. But it's a problem. It's a problem with the pressure from the parents, mm -hmm. um, not understanding why do you not want to go to university um, and, and understanding that there are, there are other things that are more fulfilling and that are actually, you know, can provide you with a very good life. Yeah. And how did you handle your, uh, uh, yourself as a parent uh, with your eldest uh, child when it came to career choices? Um, I said to him, you do what, <laughs> you do what, what works for you. You do what, um, you do what I said, you know what, whatever you decide to do, I just want you to be the best that you can be at that. What is important to me is that you do your best. You try hard, you work hard. It doesn't matter what you, what you are. I, I don't really care, but I want you to be happy. But what, what's important for me as an African parent is that you work hard. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the issue for me is the whole working hard thing. Um, what he chose to work hard in, that's, that's irrelevant. But what I wanted him was to work hard and to make a good life for himself. Amazing. Uh, Sister Naomi, how did you get to choose your career path? as a student i just asked the parent because she has a child uh, at that level as a student how did you get to the career path that you are now sociology 
This is a very interesting question for me. And I I'm going to share something that I am not, I've never shared. I don't really share with people. Maybe I've shared with one person because it was just embarrassing. Back to the mentality of, um, you know, I have to go at the university, at a university. Honestly, I was blindly just jumping to just attend a university. And I remember that when I moved to Norway, I Googled what is the best university in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> and Bergen showed up somewhere. And I was like, yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, I had like that um, mentality. Okay, I'm, since, of course, childhood, you, you want to be something big, something with a name, something people recognize. And I was going for a doctor. Until yeah. I attended physics classes and chemistry classes, and I, I just wanted to cry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, um, I would say my teachers, they were great, but oh man. But I dropped physics for social anthropology, and I found my life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> that is my <laughs> So, yeah. But I have to say back to the choosing of university. Actually, I was 100% sure when I applied for sociology that I applied for socionome. Oh. So the, I was blinded by the fact that I have to go to a, a university and I applied for a wrong thing. Because sociology, socionome, I don't know what I was thinking. It sounds like a very stupid mistake, but that was my honest mistake. It turned out well. I can't really change anything about the experience that I have gained attending the university that, I've, uh, uh, that I attend. You probably never see me on this platform if things did not happen to that. So I was blessed or lucky, whatever you can call it. Yeah. yeah but that, that is why I'm very big on lack of information and lack of a clear picture of what people, what path people should follow depending on what they want. You know, yeah. I knew uh, like at the second year of my video going there, I knew that I wanted to work with refugee. I didn't know how, but I wanted that. So I like, okay, what career paths do you get to work with people like that? So that was what informed my uh, career choice and career path. Uh, you, you notice that I don't mention influence of parents, but I think uh, being African, the community is kind of your parent and you're already even if your mother is not there she's probably there all the time with you telling you what to do it's just like that <laughs> yeah, but I was I, I didn't move here with my parents I moved here with my siblings and they also have their own stories two of them chose the Yikas Fag so we do have different stories and we're still facing consequences of lack of information like how huh? Yeah, so that that is them. That is my my story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for those experiences. And uh, I have a question to all of you. This was a very long uh, thing. Anyway, uh, we'll just take it as far as it goes. Um, what? So you said something very important that she let her child choose what they wanted to do as long as they will work hard and they will be happy in what they do. And the statistics say something different with regards to uh, the sciences and which is Asian um, uh, Im immigrants or uh, students with immigrant backgrounds, Asian immigrant backgrounds. Um, the question is, do we as a community, specifically the black community, do we have a role to play uh, when it comes to career choices and what careers or um, yeah, what careers are relevant to us in uh, the Norwegian uh, system. For example, uh, is it okay for us as a collective to encourage our children to pick out uh, careers in um, uh, multiculturalism, uh, careers in um, uh, sociology or social integration or uh, law or yeah those kind of things. We can just start to whoever can answer first. Wow. 
Wow, that's a good question. I don't want to go first. <laughs> Is it, I, can, is it, is it, I can go if you okay. want. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, um, I said, to my, I said to my son that he can, you know, do whatever he wants to do. Um, but of course, a part of me wanted him to choose something that would be an easier path in life, yeah. which is, yeah, um, which he didn't quite do. Um, and that's, I think that's natural for any parent. You want your child to, to take a path that is going to be, to open up doors for them and make it easier for them. But what you say is that I feel that we need minorities in all jobs. Yes. We shouldn't all be crowded in one, in, one, uh, in, in one specific discipline or one specific area. We are needed everywhere. Um, yes. As someone working at the university, I feel there aren't enough of us there. You know, I go to meetings where, you know, faculty meetings where I'm the only one sometimes, even though there are others, because that in itself is a weakness. And our, our you know, our needs can, are, are not going to be heard. We, you know, you have a lone voice shouting out, you know, trying to, to be heard. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, we need more doctors, you know, because there's so many stories of people going and not getting listened to because yeah. the person just has no clue where you're yeah. coming from yeah um so i really feel that i don't think we should push our children but i think we should show them the options that are there and discuss the different options and i think naomi your point about information wow that is so important yeah. because it's so easy to be half informed and go in the wrong direction mm. um so i think um we need we, we need more minorities in all the different tv for example we need to see our kids need to see more people that look like them on TV. I'm coming, people. You know, so actors, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Um, we need that. Uh, presenters, you know, so yeah. So that's that's my that's my opinion. There is that we need to be more visible. Share this another call. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So, Vic, what can you say about uh, the role of parents? How can we encourage or? Our children, yeah. Um, I would think that uh, in as much as we are trying to educate our children, uh, we, uh, the immigrant parents, we need our, some, some kind of education ourselves. I'm surprised there are no classes for immigrant parents. <laughs> <laughs> we really need some schooling because I, I see that there can be easily like a cultural clash between a parent and their own children. Because yeah. like Sifu you was saying earlier, like we are raised in that uh, uh, society where there are social uh, uh, and so and we have this background that uh, education is gonna place you uh, on a different or on a better level than uh, uh, if you're not educated, which is true, but perhaps in another setting. And then we need to learn uh, uh, now that we are in a different environment. That uh, you know, I have come to appreciate that any kind of career that one chooses uh, is actually okay. We need people all over. We need people everywhere. Otherwise, if everybody wanted to be a doctor, who would teach your children, for example? So we we can just be just about anyone. And in places like this, uh, people just they can just be happy with any type of a job. You see, buying them their houses, the cars of their choices, and they'll be going for vacation in Hawaii and Ibiza every summer, even if they are working on a tea in a shop. So that's okay, as long as they are healthy with themselves. But I think, again, as a parent, you know, there are some uh, things that you go, oh, if my child was doing this and that. But I don't think it is our responsibility to push them, but showing them the options. And yeah, just like guiding, we are there to guide, but not necessarily showing them the options. But okay, if you go this way, and that, yeah, or you know, these are the options. You make your choice. But I understand that is difficult. From where I'm coming from, you know, we're never given choices. It was like either you're an engineer or you're a doctor or a lawyer. Anything outside of this, you're a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so you kind of uh, coming to where we are now that you had to go for a bachelor in uh, in political science is because you failed to to get fifteen points to get into the law class. 
<laughs> it was a failure. It was a disgrace. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you kind of, uh, yeah, try to work with what we have, but really we didn't have options. It was like, yo, you'll be told that, you know what? No, 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 not this. You know, I was very good in sports. I could sprint. I, I was a sprinter. Like yeah. uh, I can shoot at 100 meters, uh, 200 meters uh, fast, just like that. Uh, I can start really well and end well in very short distance. And my school really wanted me to do that, you know, but my father came one of the days and he went to the headmaster's office and ruined <laughs> everything. <laughs> he said, you know what, I want my child, the reason why I'm paying fees here is that my child can get an education and get out of, of this place and do something important in their life. But, you know, when I look back at it, I can kind of understand it's because of uh, where he is coming from. Um, yeah. Yes, it was almost like education was the only opportunity we had to go to other places. And then you also pick this politics and the support from our own governments, from where we are coming from, who would have support you as a, as a sports person and take you to that level. So that's how we end, have so many of our talented people lacking support and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So our parents then ended up pushing us in only one direction. So I kind of understand, but then for my children, I tell my children, it's okay to be a sports person. If you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, I didn't get the opportunity myself. I could be sprinting right now, but <laughs> <look at that. laughs> So Slayo, what can you say um, about uh, uh, this topic and uh, encouraging young people to choose careers that will change the course of history or influence uh, the experience of minority groups and the black uh, um, uh, ethnicity in uh, Norway? Well, for, from my own experience, I think there is not one way to, to, do, to, 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 to reach the goal you want. You could, your goal might be to be, I don't know, to work on TV, but you know, maybe you, you still need food on the table, you still need to pay rent. And as a, you know, as a person who came the way I came, you don't really have a backup plan where you will lean on, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds very nice to follow your dreams, but uh, man, it, it's, you have to be aware that it's going to be challenging. And, you know, you, you probably have to follow your heart, but just take your head with you. Uh, and don't don't worry if you know you're not taking the same uh course as everybody else yeah. um i'll probably you'll probably see me in sociology one day and another time you see me in a lab that's okay you know as long as you you can create your own path because as a minority the society was not designed for you you have to be aware of that you kind of have to crack some codes and you know uh, use other yeah. paths but at the end of the day, be happy and follow Mrs. Fungi's advice that she gave to her son. I think that was great. Okay, thank you so much um, with those feedbacks. Uh, so what uh, the lady said, when it comes to career choices, the, the question from our dear friend viewer um, was that parents tend to choose or want to control what their children do after they've gone to school. And uh, it was alluded that it is due to our backgrounds and uh, just what we think is making it and not making it. And we carry that with us because in our societies, uh, it's not every uh, occupation that is dubbed as you made it. In some occupations, you just, oh, okay, you just wasted time. Uh, but in this society, as Fungi said, it doesn't necessarily matter what you do and take the advice that you work hard at what you do, you become visible at whatever you choose to do and you're going to make it. That is the definition of making it. Uh, Sis Naomi said more and more and more information plus, uh, uh, what Sis Vic said, the re-education of parents on careers and what it means to make it and um, be of inspiration and impact in society. When you're on TV, you can still uh, have a voice on minority issues. When you are a sports person, you can so you they are used so much. And we as black parents or minority parents have to be educated about career choices that being a sprinter, this could be a sprinter, well sprinter 
and a little bit more way and having massive influence on the experience of female black uh, uh, immigrants in Norway maybe, you know, more than she could be having at the moment, you know, and we need that re-education. We do need the reset of mind. I was speaking to a friend uh, a while ago, we're out of time, um, about my, uh, what I'm doing at the moment. And uh, he said something profound that we that come from formerly colonized countries still suffer from the slavery of the mind where we still view success in this form that we were given and we can't seem to break out of it to view success in our way at the time that we choose to define it uh, in our given circumstances and that stuck with me to say you can define your own life regardless of what you do but at whatever you do make yourself of value and you will be noticed and that's very uh, important and we could also discuss parents will also discuss their uh, career choices all the career choices uh, with their children of course i'm sure parents do manipulate uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one is more attractive than that one this one is so cool but hey you know but give the information and uh, uh yeah careers we didn't finish um uh, education challenges and opportunities it was only one thing last but we are out of time um i don't know if uh, we have any last words uh to close this discussion we start from this fungi um i guess it's just the like you know what you've just said is that um we need to um especially talking to young people that young people need to inform themselves and parents need to support young people when there is a parent uh, available. If as a young people you, you, you don't know what you need to do and you don't have the right information, then you need to try and find the sources that can support you to find the right information. Um, and a bit like what Naomi said, I really liked what Naomi said when she said that there isn't one path. It's not a straight path. I don't think any of us have had a straight path. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you have to make some sacrifices to put food on the table, but as long as you have your goal in mind, saying that this is what I really want to do. This is who, this is who I know I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, you may take some twists and turns on the way, but just keep your goal in mind. And I think that is what we need to do. Just keep focusing on that and you will get there. Thank you so much. So Victoria? Uh, I would say that uh, to conclude, like uh, the minority parents, we have to rise up to that challenge. Uh, we are extremely challenged because of our background that put us in kind of a, a box, the way of seeing uh, things. So we need to open up and uh, show our children that they can be anyone. For myself, I tell my children that, you know what, I'm not going to put anyone in a box like I was put, that you have to go this way. So take a shot and we'll support you in the direction that you choose. You can be just about anyone. If you want to play football, do it. If you want to uh, run in the co <laughs> do, <laughs> do some sports, you do it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's totally fine, but just be the best that you can in whatever it used to be. Then we'll, that, that to me is being successful at what you Thank do. you so much. This is Naomi. Yeah, uh, what they have said, and also just finding, uh, you know, being aware that you have value. If you're not good at physics or chemistry as me, or will never be a doctor, that's okay. You can still bring, or, you know, find out what you're passionate about and what you're good at, that you can be better at, and make yourself relevant to this society. We we need you, and you are valuable. valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Thank you so much, ladies, for this uh, discussion. It's a big topic, even on its own. I mean, uh, we are relying on our viewers to give us different perspectives and maybe what we would have probably missed in this discussion. We tried to cover education from the bottom all the way up to choosing careers and the role of parents also in the education of children from when they are young until uh, they go or choose their careers. Thank you so much uh, for this discussion. Um, we're looking forward to hearing from you, our lovely viewers. We are signing out. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.